Hi everyone and welcome to my channel. Today I wanted to talk to you a little bit about my foundation history and most of all my foundation struggle. And now I'll explain you a little bit of the troubles I encounter and maybe you'll recognize some of those as also your own. Reason number one why choosing a foundation at the drugstore is especially hard is because of the awful lightning in the stores. Either the light is blue next to the stand or the light is too yellow in the overall shop. It never actually corresponds to the shade that you're wearing and it doesn't reflect the true pigmentation of the foundation and how it matches to your skin. We all know that natural light is the best light under which you can choose your foundation and look at it, but for obvious reasons in shops there's no natural lighting and that makes the task of choosing a foundation especially tricky. The second challenge I usually face is the lack of selection in the shades that are offered. There are only a limited amount of shades that are made available in stores. Dream Wonder Nude was released in 12 shades in the States and it was only released in five in Denmark. Five people, five. There is Ivoire, Cameo, Natural Beige, Sand and Fawn, which are respectively number 10, 20, 22, 30 and 40. If you don't have that kind of skin for these five tones, then screw you. I can't even imagine how Asian and black people deal with the lack of selection, really. I live in Denmark and therefore the target group for the market is obviously fair skinned people with usually pink undertone. I'm obviously not from from here and although I'm pretty fair skin for an Italian, I do have a yellow undertone, yellow to neutral undertone. So for me it's still tricky. The third challenge I would say is the lack of testers. Sometimes um, you might find the right shade of foundation that looks okay from the bottle, but then sometimes there's no tester available for that shade and so you're left with the doubt whether to buy it or not, whether it actually suits your skin or not. The fourth challenge for me is usually that whenever I go to a drugstore to buy cosmetics, I'm usually wearing some makeup. I'm at least having some kind of a base, which makes the task of finding the shade that matches your actual natural skin tone impossible. Which brings me to the fifth point, which is incompetent shop assistants that I have personally had encounters with in the last months um, and years, I would say. They tend to say that one shade darker than your tone is actually okay and it gives you that, um, I don't know, tanned effect that it's supposedly good. I highly disagree with that because whenever you have a nice um, darker color on your face and your neck is still white, then it, it it just, it, it doesn't work. The other day when I went uh, foundation shopping, the shop assistant was swatching foundations on my jaw. I had done a little bit of contouring, so inevitably the shade that she matched with my skin tone was obviously too dark. So I ended up coming back to the same store and just picking my own shade according to the shade in my neck, which is a little bit more accurate than your contoured part of the face. Whenever you choose a foundation, you have to take into consideration two main things, your skin and your wishes. Before purchasing a new foundation, make a small assessment on your own, take a little time and analyze your skin. You're probably getting to know your skin better and better by the year, but um, it's very important to reflect a little bit before jumping into purchasing something that might not suit you. For example, the color of your skin. Do you have a yellow undertone, a pink undertone, a neutral undertone? That's very important when choosing a foundation because it might be too pink for your skin and then it just it just doesn't match with your neck and then it's, it's it just... There are several methods to understand what type of undertone you have and one way is to put a pink and a yellow sheet of paper next to your face and see which one actually matches your skin the most. If you have uh, little veins under your eyes or like in your neck or in the inside of your wrists, you want to check if those veins are blue, you're probably a pink undertone. If your veins are green, like in my case, then you're probably 
a yellow undertone like me. If you have a pink undertone, don't go for yellow undertone foundations. You'll just end up looking sick, which is the same thing that will happen if you have a yellow undertone and you're gonna wear a pink undertone foundation. That's really important and that's really underrated. Your type of skin. Are you an oily skin, a mixed, normal? Do you have dry skin? It's up to you to assess what kind of skin you have and therefore make a competent choice whenever choosing the right product for you. Do you have uh, very visible imperfections? Do you have very heavy uh, eye bags? Do you have little green veins all over your face? What is your problem if you have any? Uh, do you have specific needs? Do you have a very sensitive skin? How does your skin work? Which brings me to point number two, which is your needs and wishes. What do you want from a foundation? Do you want a full coverage, a medium coverage? Do you just want your skin to be a little bit more even, but without covering too much? Depending on the type of coverage that you want, you will then choose the right type of formula. Depending on how dry or oily your skin is, then you will have to choose the right type of foundation for uh, the type of skin you have. If you have a very dry skin, you probably want a very fluid formula. If you have a very oily skin, probably powder foundations are the best. My foundation history is not uh, very problematic, but it does have some useful things that I learned throughout the process of choosing one. I started wearing foundation quite late because I never had major skin problems, so I didn't feel like I needed to cover my skin that much. Uh, my first foundation was a powder foundation from Max Factor. Still got a soft spot for that. But as it turns out, it wasn't the right type of foundation for me. I have a normal to combination skin. So it, it does look good still in the T-zone, but then here around the mouth and on the sides of my nostrils here, it tended to cling on the dry patches and it just looked awful. Then I switched to liquid foundations. I think my first liquid foundation was actually from Dior. A gift from my mom probably because I could have never afforded a Dior foundation. I was maybe around 18, 19. Um, I loved it. It worked perfectly for me. Most recently I've been wearing my L'Oreal uh, Accord Parfait, which is this foundation. It's still with the old packaging. It worked very well for me, but it was indeed too pink for my skin tone. The everlasting struggle for me is uh, not so much with the formula anymore because now I know that fluid foundations work best for me But the struggle is in the color which brings me to my recent purchases and to my uh, most recent struggle with the beauty industry and the rage that I carry with me. When it came to um, buying a new foundation recently, then I tried with the L'Oreal True Matte shade 1.5N. It's this color. Then I exchanged it for a Maybelline foundation when I realized that that was too light for me. The shop assistant advised me to try the Maybelline Dream Wonder uh, Nude. I have read many reviews about this and not all of them were enthusiastic. It's a very liquid, very, very liquid formula in a tiny, tiny packaging. I gave it a go and it's more expensive than the L'Oreal True Match and it's less product. The struggle continued with the Maybelline because uh, the shop assistant initially matched me, as I said, with the shade number 20, I think, Cameo, and that just didn't work with me. It was way too dark. Um, so I came back and I chose my own shade by myself and I basically went in and out of the shop with the shade with the swatches on on my hand to see under the natural light where whether it was okay or not. My second attempt is with number 30 sand, always in the Dream Wonder Nude formula. So I'll swatch them for you and I'll comment them so you know what's going on. I'm going to use different brushes so we don't mix up the uh, colors. I'm going to use the Sephora number 45. It's a mineral powder brush but works wonders for foundations. Then I'm gonna use my Real Techniques buffing brush and then the stippling brush from Always Real Techniques. too light for my skin tone. It makes me 
look a bit whitish. I'm now gonna try the foundation that the shop assistant matched me with, which is the Maybelline uh, Dream Wonder Nude in the shade 20 Cameo. And you'll see why I wasn't too crazy about it. Okay, I washed off that monstrous uh, foundation, so now I'm gonna try the Maybelline Dream Wonder Nude in the shade 30, Sand. It's a little bit darker still than my neck color. Um, a little bit pink. I told you this was a struggle. 